Here is absolutely every single survivor in DBD ranked by their teachable perks. The worst one is unfortunately going to Hattie. In my opinion, her perks are just way too situational and they're kind of just really niche. So I don't think they're very helpful. She has inner focus, which lets you see the scratch marks of other survivors. Like that's not exactly very useful. And then if a survivor loses a health state nearby, the killer's aura is revealed to you for a few seconds. Like how would this be helpful? If somebody gets injured nearby, you'd probably be able to see the killer already. Then there's residual manifest, which gives the killer the blindness status effect for 30 seconds if you blind them. That really doesn't do much for the killer. They just can't really see auras, which isn't that big of a deal. And then you can rummage through a chest once per trial and get a guaranteed yellow flashlight. So that doesn't really matter since you could just bring one into the trial. And then she is overzealous, which is probably her best perk because it increases your repair speed by 10% if you destroy a dull totem or 20% if it's a hex totem, but it deactivates when you lose a health state by any means. So you kind of get a very small effect. And if you get hit, you just completely lose it. So it's kind of pointless. Next is going to Yoichi. Two of his perks are almost completely worthless. Empathic connection lets other survivors see your aura if they're injured and you get a small 10% boost to healing speeds, which will save you like literally half a second. So it's kind of just helping other people out instead of yourself. And then he has Boon Dark Theory, which is probably one of the worst boon perks in the game. It just gives you 2% extra speed when you're inside of the radius, which is like nothing. Like we literally had made for this, which gives you more haste than this perk. And you could have it pretty much whenever you wanted. It was so dumb. And then he has Parental Guidance, which isn't that bad of a perk. It removes your scratch marks and pools of blood and grunts of pain for the next seven seconds after stunning a killer, which can actually be pretty useful on certain builds like smash hit builds. But if it's a good killer and if it's an open map, it's probably not going to really do much for you. Next up on the list, we have Ellen Ripley. Now I could be completely wrong about these perks, but they're all just very mediocre in my opinion. Like Chemical Trap is kind of nice to give you additional distance if the killer kicks the pallet, but depending on the pallet, the killer could just completely ignore kicking the pallet and just bloodlust you until you die. So it could be useless. Then she has Light Footed, which sounds really bad on paper, but supposedly it's good against good killers. It just completely eliminates the sounds of your footsteps when running when you're healthy, and then it disables for 20 seconds if you perform a rushing vault action. I personally don't think this perk would do anything for a majority of the match unless you're going against like a spirit on swamp when you have the really muddy footsteps i really don't think it's that big of a deal but i could be completely wrong about this perk let me know in the comments below and then she has lucky star which is just so bad when you hide in a locker it suppresses your grunts of pain and your pools of blood for 10 seconds and when you exit the locker you see the auras of other survivors for 10 seconds and the aura of the closest generator to you and then it has a cooldown of 30 seconds like it's a decent information perk for new players to figure out where your teammates are and to figure out where gens are but other than that it's not totally helpful and there's much better aura rating perks out there next up i'm sad to say but we have steve harrington i will say steve's perks are underrated he is low on this list but they are underrated he has babysitter which used to be completely useless until they added base kit borrow time when you unhook a survivor they don't have any scratch marks or pools of blood for eight seconds and they have a seven percent increased haste for eight seconds so this is kind of just an anti-tunnel perk to help the person that you're unhooking get away from the killer and it stacks on top of the base kit borrow time so the survivor will completely outrun the killer if the killer tries to chase them. It's decent in some situations, but usually the killer just won't go for that person. So it's not that bad, but in my opinion, there's so many better alternatives for, you know, anti-tunnel perks that this one's just not that worth it. And then he has camaraderie, which is just a completely useless perk when reassurance exists. It pauses the struggle phase timer for 34 seconds when a survivor comes within 16 meters of your hook. So like, yeah, it's more helpful for you, especially if you're a solo queue player. It's just so not worth the perk slot at all, in my opinion, especially with the new anti-camping mechanic. It's kind of useless. And then my personal favorite perk on him is second wind which activates when you heal another survivor for the equivalent of one full health state and then the next time you're unhooked you become broken for 20 seconds but then after those 20 seconds are up you become completely healed so it's kind of like the progress that you use to heal somebody else gets applied to you 20 seconds after a hook phase and this perk is much better now that there's base get borrowed time involved so you're almost guaranteed a majority of the time to be able to get this healing off next on the list this one's going to be controversial but it is going to jane so she is solidarity which in my opinion is honestly a pretty underrated perk. It essentially transfers 50% of your healing progress to yourself. So if you heal somebody else an entire health state, you'll get 50% progress. So you do save eight seconds every single heal, which is not bad. It's just not that great of a healing perk compared to other ones like Botany or Will Make It that'll help you out much more in the match. And then she has Poised, which is so bad. It's so god awful. When a gen is completed, you won't leave any scratch marks for 10 seconds. Wow. <laughs> like, yay, very helpful. If you are able to get all gens done, which happens like half of the time, then you'll only get five uses out of this. Like it's so, it's so useless. And then we come to head on. Okay. I know people are going to be mad. Head on is not a good perk. It is one of the most fun perks in the game and can come in clutch in a lot of situations, but against a good killer head on is just not really going to do anything. Like for example, whenever I play killer and people are using head on, it is so extremely obvious. Even if they're using like quick and quiet and stuff, it's so easy to bait a survivor out of a head on and just be able to down them. So if you're looking for a fun perk, this is one of the ones to get. It's super fun to do head on builds 
with friends, especially against mediocre or bad killers that don't really know what they're doing. But once you start to get up to competent killers, you might be able to get one or two stuns in the game, but it won't really change much. The 34th spot is going to Lori, and it makes me so sad because she used to be one of the top survivors in the game in regards to teachable perks, and her perks just got completely nerfed to the ground. Soul Survivor is just so useless, I don't even want to talk about it. The new object of obsession is fine, but it's like kind of also useless. If the killer is reading your aura, you're able to read their aura. So it's a good way to figure out if the killer has like lethal pursuer or barbecue. But in general, it's kind of easy to figure that out anyway, if you just kind of use your brain. And then every 30 seconds, your aura is revealed to the killer for three seconds, but you gain a 6% speed boost to repairing, healing, and cleansing, which is absolutely nothing. It'll save you maybe a second or two on a gen at the expense of the killer being able to see you. It's just, it's not worth running in my opinion. Like creative rework, but it's just, it's just not good. And then we have decisive strike, which makes me so sad this perk deserves a buff. I'm pretty sure you all know what DS does, but for 60 seconds after being unhooked, if the killer downs you and then picks you up again, you get a skill check. And if you hit the skill check, you get off of their shoulders and you stun them for three seconds. But the animation of getting off their shoulders takes one second. So you have two seconds to get away. This does nothing. This does absolutely nothing, especially if you're going against a killer like Blight or like Wesker or like Spirit or something. They're just going to be able to catch up to you and down you immediately anyway. So it's kind of just so pointless. This perk just needs the stun duration back to five seconds seconds to be able to actually be kind of useful. But maybe that's just me. Like in my opinion, even back in the day when I played killer and this perk didn't deactivate when survivors touch gens, I didn't really have a problem with it because I didn't tunnel. So it didn't really affect me. So in my opinion, anti-tunnel perks should be strong to dissuade killers from tunneling. But that's just my opinion. Next up, we have Jake. And I'm sad to say that Iron Will is so doo-doo. It's so bad. I, and I know there's people out there that are like, oh, it's basically the same thing if you crouch and if you use ace or whatever. But no, it's not at all. For stealth, yes, sure. But the main benefit of this perk was using it in chase. It made it much harder for the killer to figure out where you were through walls, which was a huge deal. You could do a lot of text, like you could do window text. You could do various stuff where you blind them with a flashlight and go through them. But now that it reduces your grunts of pain only by 75% instead of 100% means that the killer can hear you no matter what. Like if you're trying to do any of these texts in chase, they're still going to be able to hear you. So it's kind of pointless to do them. Like the old iron wheel just allowed so much more interesting dynamics in chase and much more fun things that you could do. And just removing this perk completely mitigated that, which makes me really sad. Oh yeah, also now it doesn't work when you're exhausted. So there's that. And then he has Calm Spirit, which has actually kind of made a comeback. Like it's a terrible perk normally, but with so many people using ultimate weapon lately, it's honestly like not that bad if you're getting annoyed by the perk. It basically just prevents you from screaming. So it's it's a hard counter to infectious fright users and doctor users. And then it also stops you from spooking crows when you walk by them, which against good killers is actually a huge deal. So underrated perk right now, but let's be real, it's still pretty bad. Oh yeah, it also makes you completely quiet when unlocking chests or cleansing and blessing totems, but it reduces their speed by 30%. I would almost rather not run this perk and get that 30% extra speed because that 30% can make or break a win if the killer is using like Devour Hope or something. And then lastly, he has Saboteur, which is fine if you want to do Sabo builds. It makes it much easier to do that. I would never recommend running this perk without a Sabo toolbox. It's just useful to see the auras of hooks when you're going for a Sabo, especially since now you can see the aura of Scourge hooks. But overall, it's just kind of very situational and only works on one build. All right, next up on the list, we have Cheryl. This makes me so sad because she used to be really high up, but she just kind of got worse and worse as the meta changed. She has Soul Guard, which is just completely pointless now. It makes it so that you get the endurance effect when you're healed from the dying state. But we have Buckle Up, which does the same exact thing, but for both you and the person that picked you up. So Soul Guard is just objectively a worse version of Buckle Up. Although it does have the additional effect of if there's a Hex perk and you're cursed, you're able to completely recover yourself from the dying state. But Hex perks have been nerfed to the ground, so most of them are just kind of completely pointless, except for like Devour. So you're almost never going to run into Hex builds. Completely worthless just run buckle up and then she has blood pact which also has an alternative which is just the same exact perk but better and that perk is called power of two we'll talk about it later but it literally does the same exact thing but better long story short this perk makes it so that when you heal somebody if you stay within 16 meters of each other you both are seven percent faster but if either of you leave the radius then it deactivates this just isn't a great perk and there's no point in running it when you have power of two and then she has repressed alliance which just kind of is more detrimental than it is helpful in most situations after 45 seconds of repairing generators it activates and you can press a button to block the generator for 30 seconds, completely preventing it from regressing. But this also means that it completely prevents it from progressing. So if your teammate has repressed alliance and they use this when the killer's coming to them, but then the killer chases them and you try to get back on the gen, you can't and you have to wait 30 seconds and it could just completely ruin a match. Like it was decent during the gen kick meta, but now that that meta doesn't exist anymore, it's just not that worth. Next on our list is Talitha. Her first perk is friendly competition, which is just another gen rush perk that does barely anything. When you complete a generator with at least one other person, both you you and the other survivors that were on that gen with you have an increased repair speed of 5%. 5%. That 
that is like nothing because you have to spend the time getting to another gen and 5% will barely do anything unless you stack it with three other gen perks, which is generally not worth it. And then she's power of two, which is just the better version of blood pact. Like blood pact only works with the obsession, but this one works when you heal any survivor, except it's a 5% haste instead of a 7%. So technically it's 2% less, but it works with any survivor that you heal, not just the obsession. So yeah, you're 2% slower, but it doesn't really matter because you can activate it on any survivor. Like I, I really don't see a reason to use blood pact over this. And then she has cut loose, which is kind of like a, a reverse quick and quiet in a way. I actually really like the idea of this perk. I just don't think it's all too practical. So essentially, if you fast vault for the next six seconds, if you fast vault again, it won't make any sound whatsoever. So you almost have to be loud to be able to be quiet, if that makes sense. So it can kind of throw off killers if they're not really paying attention. But in most situations, besides maybe like double vaulting shack, it just becomes very situational and is extremely hard to get good value out of it. Next up, I'm sad to say is Leon Kennedy. I absolutely love Bite the Bullet. I think it's one of the most fun perks in the game. Pairing Bite the Bullet with like Lucky Break and Overcome is so fun. I'm sure most of you know, but it just makes your healing completely silent. So on its own, it's really bad, but in combination with other perks, it can become very, very strong, especially if you bring like a map offering to Larius or something. Would highly recommend trying out this perk if you want a fun build. And then he has Flashbang, which is again, another very fun perk, but it's just not really worth a perk slot in my opinion when you could just bring a flashlight. If you're trying to be extremely optimal and you bring a really good toolbox and then you use the toolbox at the beginning of the game and then you're able to craft flashbangs throughout the rest of the game then i can see it being pretty decent but in general it's just kind of a meh perk and then he has rookie spirit which is just so bad like it's kind of helpful for solo queue it just makes it so that you can see the auras of any generators that are regressing but since we're not really in like the ruin meta anymore for example gens don't really regress often usually it's just maybe a couple gens at a time and you'll likely know which gens are regressing without this perk anyway because it's probably just a killer holding a three gen it's just another one of those perks that you don't really need if you have game knowledge next up we have ada and ada has wiretap which i think is such a cool idea for a perk and i honestly think it's a bit underrated it becomes active when you've repaired a gen for a total of 50 percent and then you can press a button to install a trap and for two whole minutes if the killer comes within 14 meters of this gen their aura is revealed to every single survivor and then it deactivates if the killer kicks that gen or if the timer runs out but the killer doesn't know that this gen is tapped so if you have a gen like inside of a jungle gym for example you can have literal wall hacks on the killer it's so awesome it's such a fun perk but it does have a lot of requirements and a lot of luck and a lot of prerequisites to work properly so that's the only downside to this perk but on the off chance you get good value out of this perk it feels borderline op and then she's reactive healing which is just a very niche perk for some very specific like body blocking builds it makes it so that if another survivor near you gets hit you get 50 percent of your missing healing progression in your health bar so if you're not healed at all and somebody gets hit you go up to 50 percent and then if somebody else gets hit you go up to 75 and so on and so forth i just think it's a very mediocre healing perk like sure it's good on those very specific body blocking builds but overall there's just so many more healing perks that would give you way more value and then she has low profile and is just like soul survivor i don't even want to talk about it any perk that's only active if you're the last survivor left just don't run it's so bad all right moving on to felix felix has visionary which is a really good perk for beginners but a really bad perk for anybody with more than like 50 hours on the game it just shows you the auras of generators so yeah it's very helpful for newer survivors especially on indoor maps but as you get more experience and you start to learn gen spawns and you start to learn that like blinking lights mean that there's a generator nearby the perk becomes kind of useless this root measures is like a really solid middle ground for a healing perk it's just a reverse the nanophobia so for every survivor that's injured hooked or slugged you get an additional 14 percent increase to healing a lot of people might think oh this is a great perk against plague or against legion because they're you know keeping us injured all the time but you don't want to heal against legion and you can't heal against plague so the two characters that would give you the most value out of this perk are kind of irrelevant unfortunately but overall i still think it's pretty solid and is especially clutch in endgame because it also increases your unhooking speed by the same amount. So if there's a camping killer, especially with the distance that they have to be away with the new anti-camping mechanic, that increased unhooking speed can actually come in a lot of clutch situations. But it's not as useful as it used to be because hook grabs don't exist anymore. And that was kind of the entire point of getting faster unhooks, but it's still pretty solid. And then it's built to last, which is just a good perk to refresh your equipment if you want to use it multiple times. Moving on to Elodie, two of her perks are just kind of bad. She has appraisal, which allows you to rummage through a chest after it's already been open to get another item. So if you're doing a chest build, then sure, I guess it's fine. And then she has Deception, which again is a very fun perk, but just very situational and kind of bad. It allows you to fake going into a locker, but you don't actually go into it and you lose your scratch marks and blood for three seconds. It's decent on certain spots of certain maps, but usually killers will pick up on this pretty quickly. And after they notice you have Deception, it'll be really hard to fool them. And lastly, Power Struggle, which is why she's so high on this list. Power Struggle alone is a really bad perk, but when you pair it with stuff like Flip Flop and Unbreakable, it becomes borderline uncounterable if you're playing with another person. Because if the killer's about to 
to down you. You just let them down you on a pallet and then the killer either picks you up and your friend nearby gets the stun or the killer starts to chase that friend nearby and you get to power struggle. For those of you who don't know, if your wiggle progression is 15% or more and the killer walks through a pallet, you can throw the pallet while you're on the killer's shoulders. So with flip flap that converts your recovery progress to wiggle progress, you can immediately throw the pallet once you get picked up if you, you know, have a few seconds to recover. So you don't see it often, but it is, in my opinion, a little bit uncounterable. Moving on to Yun Jin, she is fast track, which is one of the better gen rushing perks. When another survivor is hooked, you gain three tokens up to a maximum of 27 tokens. And when you hit a great skill check, each token gets converted into 1% of progression into the generator. So if you have nine tokens, if you hit a great skill check, it'll automatically give you nine additional percent to that generator. So it's pretty solid to actually make a little bit of a comeback if your team is not doing so hot. And I'd honestly recommend trying it out if you're not able to get gens done very often. And then she has smash hit, which is one of the worst exhaustion perks, but it's still pretty decent and is very fun, especially when paired with stuff like parental guidance. Smash it just gives you a four second sprint burst whenever you stun a killer with the pallet. But unlike other exhaustion perks, you only get exhausted for 20 seconds. So you can use smash hit so much in a single chase if you bring other perks like fixated to walk faster and vigil to recover your exhaustion faster. The problem with this perk is that killers will start respecting pallets once they know that you have it, but this will allow you to greed pallets more often, which can be helpful. And lastly, she is self-preservation, which is god awful. It's so bad. If a survivor is injured nearby, you lose all scratch marks and blood for the next 10 seconds. It's it's like poised, like it's so situational and is probably not going to do anything for you. Next up is Vittorio, who has potential energy, which is a useful perk for getting out of three gens. If you have four gens left on the map and you notice that the killer's holding a three gen, just go to the gen that's not part of that three gen, activate this perk, and all of the progress from the gen you're working on will get transferred into this perk. And then if you go back to one of the gens in the three gen, and all of that progress immediately goes on that gen. So you can get a lot of very good progress to break a three gen, which is honestly pretty helpful in this three gen meta. But one of the problems with this perk is that it kind of takes so long to actually get the progression and you're kind of wasting time not progressing the game. So you have to make that trade off on whether that wasted time is worth it, especially considering that you can lose all of the progression that you put into this perk if you get hit. So all of that wasted time you spent on a gen not progressing it can be gone just like that. It's a decent perk, but a little too situational for my liking. Then he has Fogwise, which is honestly very good. It's super simple. Whenever you get a great skill check, you see the aura of the killer for six seconds. After a while, you can hit great skill checks pretty consistently and this can give you so much information throughout the match. It's kind of insane. Like I would really recommend trying out this perk if you haven't already. It is very, very useful, especially if you're going against a stealth killer like Ghostface to know if he's in a stealth because you won't be able to see his aura. And lastly, he has Quick Gambit, which is so bad. If you're being chased near a survivor that's working on a gen, they get an 8% additional speed to working on the gen. But the killer is just going to go to that person that's working on the gen if you're nearby. Like it's so counterintuitive. This perk is useless. You'll get no value out of this perk. Moving on to Michaela, who you used to be probably a top five survivor in terms of perks. She's clairvoyance, which is a pretty solid information perk. If you cleanse or bless a totem, you can hold your ability button to activate this perk and see the auras of any exegates, gens, hooks, chests, and the hatch when you're within 64 meters of them for 10 seconds. But it doesn't use it up instantly. It's kind of like a key or a map where you can hold it and then it activates, but you can let go and save the rest of the seconds for later. So you can kind of just tap it every once in a while to get an aura read and be able to get a ton of use out of it. Pretty solid info perk. Then she has Boon Circle of healing, which went from the best perk in the game to such a mediocre perk. Now it's just a boon that doubles healing speeds when you're healing somebody else within the boon's radius. So it's not terrible. Like it's still pretty decent, but the main appeal of this perk was being able to heal yourself. And now that that's gone, it's just kind of flown under the radar a bit. And then there's boon shadow step where any survivors within the radius have no scratch marks and cannot have their auras read. Honestly, this perk alone isn't great, but if you pair it with like circle of healing, for example, then it can kind of be useful. The problem with this perk is hiding the scratch marks doesn't really help because the killer will just hear the boon and we'll just go break it if you're being chased within the radius. So it kind of ends up just being an aura hiding ability, but you could just do that with distortion. So I wouldn't really recommend this perk unless you're running it with another boon. Moving on to Jeff, his breakdown, which breaks the hooks for 180 seconds. If you're ever unhooked, this is either the most useless thing in the world or it's extremely overpowered and there's no in between. Like on some maps, when the hooks break, the killer physically cannot get to another hook. So they're forced to drop you or you wiggle out. But then there's other maps where there's hooks within six feet of each other and this perk will do absolutely nothing. So there's just no consistency. And his next perk is Aftercare, which is just one of the worst aura reading perks. Like it's not bad, but there's no reason to use it over Bond or Empathy, which is just objectively better. The auras of any survivor that you unhook, they unhook you, you heal, or they heal you, become permanently available to see between both of you. So let's say a survivor heals you, they'll be able to see your aura and you'll be able to see their aura. But this perk resets if you're hooked, which is just bound to happen. So you start to build up this nice aura reading ability and then you get hooked and then all of that stuff you just built 
built up is completely lost. So it's just not worth it when you could run Empathy or Bond, which do the same exact thing, but are way more consistent. And lastly, we have DVD Twitter's favorite perk, Distortion. You start with three tokens, and if the killer tries to read your aura, it consumes a token, and your aura is blocked from being read for the next 10 seconds, and you lose all scratch marks for the next 10 seconds. And then for every 30 seconds you're in the killer's terror radius, you recharge one token. So it's just an anti-aura perk, essentially. And the problem with this perk isn't the perk itself. It's the people who use this perk. Like the people complaining on Twitter are complaining about this perk just because of the type of people that actually use this perk. The type of people who use this perk don't like to be chased and just like to hide all game, which is one of the most boring things possible from a killer's perspective. So that's why there's so many people that complain about this perk on Twitter. But the perk itself is not an issue. It's a pretty solid perk if you want to counter stuff like barbecue and lethal. But I just personally don't like the stealth playstyle. I, I just find it very, very tedious and very boring. So if that's up your alley, then go for it. Next up on the list, we have Jill, who has overall just very decent perks. Nothing terrible, but nothing amazing. Her first perk is Counterforce, which makes you cleanse totems 20% faster. And then every time you cleanse a totem, you get an additional 20% faster cleansing speed. So it's 20% on the first one, then 40, then 60, then 80, etc. And then once you cleanse a totem, the aura of the totem furthest away from you is revealed to you for four seconds. But you don't want to be going back and forth between the furthest totems because it'll waste so much time. You should just keep the aura of it in the back of your mind. This perk is kind of just terrible right now because there's not really a hex meta. So perks usually don't need to be cleansed. And honestly, it's almost probably more detrimental because more killers use hex pedimento, which wants you to cleanse the totems. So you're probably putting yourself at a disadvantage if you bring this perk regardless. Next, she has Resurgence, which is a super underrated perk. Every time you're unhooked, you're instantly healed 50%. So if a survivor decides to heal you at the hook, it'll only take eight seconds instead of 16. This may not sound that great, especially because it only activates twice in a match, but it can be much more helpful than it sounds on paper. There's a lot of times, especially in endgame, where you need to reset to be able to go for a save on a camping killer because you need at least two people to be able to get the save without trading. And Resurgence could be very helpful in those situations because you don't have to spend so much time healing each other. Plus, if you have a teammate running will make it, you get healed in four seconds. It's insane. And her last perk is Blast Mine, which is mediocre, but it's a very, very funny perk. Most of you probably know what it is. After you repair gens for a total of 50%, it activates and you can press a button to trap that gen for 120 seconds. And if the killer kicks the gen during that time, it blinds them and stuns them. And it's a very, very funny perk. This was great during the gen kick meta, but now that's kind of gone away and the meta perks are back to like Surge and Pain Res, which doesn't require the killer to kick gens. So you probably won't be getting a lot of value out of this perk now. Moving on to Ace, the only perk worth talking about is Open Handed. And the only reason to ever use this perk is with Kindred. This perk just extends the aura reading abilities of any other perk by 16 meters. So it does absolutely nothing on its own. But paired with Kindred, you get wall hacks on the killer from so far away, especially if you're on a double story map like Gideon Meat Plant. It's unbelievably strong with Kindred, but with every other aura reading perk, it's just not really that worth it. His last two perks are just very bad. Up the ante increases your luck by 9%, so you have a 9% better chance of unhooking yourself from a hook, and that is it. That is absolutely the only thing it does, but it applies to all survivors. So the only reason you'd ever use this perk is if you're with a four-man swift, and you all bring this perk because it stacks with each other, and then you all bring jars of salty lips and slippery meat to be able to almost guarantee a self on hook. Outside of that, this perk is one of the worst perks in the entire game. And lastly, we have Ace in the Hole, which just makes it so that items and chests can come with add-ons. So if you're doing a chest build, it's a decent perk to bring because there's a chance that you can get really good add-ons, but chest builds are just kind of bad. So <laughs> it's not a great perk. Moving on to Quentin. Quentin has Wake Up, which basically just increases your gate opening speed by 25%. It's pretty bad outside of comp and speed runs. Like I would almost never recommend running it because it's only 25%, but in competitive environments and if you're speed running, it's definitely worth it. Then he has Pharmacy, which is super underrated. If you're injured, every single chest that you open will give you a green med kit. Unfortunately, this perk got indirectly nerfed when the med kits got nerfed overall, but it's still pretty solid if you don't have a med kit and you need to heal yourself for a certain situation. This perk sounds situational, but when you run it, you'll realize how often it actually comes in clutch. And then he has Vigil, which increases recovery rate for a bunch of different status effects by 30%, and it also applies to every survivor near you. It's pretty much only used in combination with exhaustion perks to make your exhaustion come back faster, and it's fantastic at doing that. If you pair this with like Smash Hit or Sprint Burst, it allows you to use these perks multiple times in chase if you're able to manage your exhaustion well. Plus, it affects other survivors as well. So it's a perk that helps you and all of your teammates out for only one perk slot on the entire 16 perk slots. Moving on, we have my beloved Nia. Nia's perks are bad. She has Balanced Landing, which is either a terrible perk or a great perk, depending on the map. It's just way too inconsistent for my liking. If you fall from a great height, you get a Sprint Burst for three seconds, and then you become exhausted for 40 seconds. So it's obviously really nice on maps that have a lot of height drops, like Haddonfield or Gideon Meat Plant. But there's some maps that are so flat where the only thing you'll be able to use balance landing on is like the stairs in 
in the basement, but why would you ever do that? Or the hills that can spawn. So it's a very risky exhaustion perk to bring when you could just bring like Lithe or Sprint Burst and get essentially the same effect for a lot less downsides. And then she has Urban Evasion, which is a terrible, terrible perk. It's just a perk that traps beginners. It can have some uses against like Huntress or Deathslinger in loops to be able to still kind of loop them without being able to be hit by their power or against Hag Traps, Pyramid Head Trails or Victor's Idol Stance. But that's five killers out of like 33 killers or whatever we have nowadays. So this perk is usually more helpful to the killer than it is to you. So I would just not recommend running it. And then there's Streetwise, which just increases the efficiency of all items by 25%. And just like Vigil, it affects everybody nearby. So it can be really useful depending on what build you're doing. So if you're trying to run a healing build with a really good med kit, you'll get a lot more use out of it. Or if you're trying to just have fun and do an unlimited flashlight build or something, you can do that as well. Or even if you're using Blood Amber on a key, you can get 25% extra use of that as well. I do think that Built to Last is just kind of a better version of this perk. So I still think it's a little bit mediocre. Next up, we have Tap. Tap has Tenacity, which just lets you crawl 50% faster and allows you to recover at the same time. The only way to get value out of this perk is if the killer slugs, which doesn't happen all the time. A perk that relies on a killer doing something specific is generally not good unless it's like tunneling or something because that's really common. So unfortunately, you're not going to get a lot of use out of this perk. However, if you pair this with the Power Struggle Flip Flop build and you're not able to die on a pallet, this can allow you to get to a pallet while the killer is distracted. So it could come in handy sometimes. Then we have Detective's Hunch, which is such an underrated perk. Every time a generator is completed, the auras of generators, chests, and totems within 64 meters of you are revealed to you for 10 seconds. And the 64 meters is attached to your body. So if you move around the map, you'll be able to see other auras as well. I personally think this is one of the better info perks. Unfortunately, it's just not as good anymore with this current meta because people don't really use hex perks. But there are a lot of killers that use Penimento Plaything, which are obviously both hexes. So you'll be able to find those very easily. And it's always nice to just see the auras of generators nearby or chests nearby if you need to find a close generator or if you need to try to find a medkit in a chest. And lastly, he has Stakeout. Stakeout is a very bad perk, but there's a new perk that we'll talk about later that pairs really, really well with this one. This perk gains a token for every 15 seconds that you're in the killer's terror radius up to a maximum of four tokens. And if you get a good skill check, it'll consume one of these tokens and convert it into a great skill check. So if you're using a perk like Fogwise, for example, if you hit a good skill check, you'll still be able to get the aura read because it technically counts as a great skill check. And there's another perk that we'll talk about later called Hyper Focus, which works really, really well with this perk. The 17th spot is going to Nancy Wheeler. Better Together is not very good unless you're kind of teaching somebody the ropes of DVD. It shows all other survivors the aura of the generator that you're currently working on. And if the killer downs a survivor while you're repairing a gen, you see the auras of all other survivors for 10 seconds. Most people forget that part of the perk even exists. And I think that part of the perk is better than the main part of the perk, especially if you're playing solo queue. Being able to see where every survivor is on the map when somebody goes down is very, very helpful information. But I still just think you can run stuff like bond and empathy to get better overall information. Then she has fixated, which should not be used to walk around the entire map. If you're doing that, you're just wasting so much time and you're completely detrimenting yourself. So this perk 90% of the time should not be used for stealth. Instead, it should be used aggressively in chase. And it's a very, very good perk for that. For one, when you're walking, your exhaustion goes down. So you'll be able to regain your exhaustion mid chase. And two, if you're walking and you're not in the vision of the killer, you'll be able to lose chase. So on some loops like Shaq, you're able to vault the window more than three times in chase. And this can be totally broken. But unfortunately, this perk is kind of only good for good players. So if you're not very experienced in this game, if you have like less than maybe like 700 hours, I would say stay away from this perk. And lastly, she has Inner Strength, which is a very solid perk that I personally do not like using, but it activates whenever you cleanse a totem. And then if you hide in a locker for eight seconds, it'll heal you one health state. This is one of those perks where you don't want to actively go out of your way to cleanse a totem, but rather if you come across a totem while you're doing something else productive, then you should cleanse it because it'll come in clutch later in the match. So if you're actively looking for totems to be able to activate this perk, the amount of time you're wasting looking for the totems kind of cancels out the entire point of this perk. But if you use it properly, it can come in a lot of very, very clutch situations because you're able to heal yourself without other survivors in only eight seconds. And it can pair really well with builds like Lucky Break, Quick and Quiet, and Overcome. So if you get hit and chase, you can round the corner, hop on the locker, and it'll start your healing while the killer has no idea where you are. Moving on to Gabriel, we have Troubleshooter, which is very just not great. When you're being chased by the killer, the aura of the gen with the most progression is revealed to you. This is just the first part of this perk, and it's not bad. Like it kind of keeps you away from the people that are doing gens, which can help, especially if you're solo queuing and you don't know what gens are being worked on. But I would say the better part of this perk is every time you drop a pallet, the killer's aura is revealed to you for six seconds. So in chase, if you drop a pallet and the killer starts to try to mind game you, you're able to see them through walls, which can honestly be pretty helpful on certain loops, especially if it's like a Huntress or a Deathslinger that's trying to hit you over the pallet. Then he is made for this, which would have probably brought him to one of the top five survivors, but it got nerfed. It's still a really good perk, but it's kind of used in a different way.
away now. So whenever you heal another survivor, whether that be off the ground or if you heal them from injured to full, you gain endurance for 10 seconds. So it's almost like a reverse soul guard, but it also activates if you heal somebody instead of just picking them up off the ground. This can be really, really useful because it allows you to take a hit in clutch situations, which can help both of you get away from a situation. On top of that, if you're suffering from the deep wound status effect, you're 3% faster. So this perk kind of completely counters Deathslinger, but it's also a great anti-tunnel perk if somebody, you know, hits you with the base kit borrowed time after you're unhooked, because then you'll have that 3% extra haste until they down you, which can make the tunneling a lot more difficult. And you can also pair this with Dead Hard. So if you're able to activate this deep wound by dead harding a hit, then it'll take even longer for the killer to down you because you have that additional 3% haste. And then he's Scavenger, which can be good in some situations. Basically every five great skill checks, it'll fully recharge your toolbox. But while it's recharging, your repair speed is reduced by 50%. However, if you use this perk properly and you get to those five tokens and then you do something else productive like healing a nearby teammate while you have that reduced repair speed for 30 seconds, you basically just get all of the upsides without any downsides, which can be very useful. But it's very hard to get any use out of this perk if you don't have communication. So if you're solo queuing, I would stay away from this perk. We're now finally in the top 15 survivors. These are the survivors I would recommend getting first because they usually have at least one really, really good perk or at least two very solid perks. If you've made it this far, go drop a like and comment a bird emoji down below. I'm going to try to heart all of those comments. The 15th spot is going to Claudette. Claudette has my favorite aura reading perk in the game, which is empathy. Empathy shows you the aura of all injured survivors within 128 meters of your location, which is essentially the whole map for pretty much every single map. This is a fantastic perk if you're going for flashlight saves, but even if you just want information on like who's being chased and where, if you're solo queuing, for example, this perk is extremely handy. And this perk has no downside. It never deactivates and it has no prerequisites. And then she has botany knowledge, which increases your healing speed by 50%, but it reduces the healing efficiency of medkits by 20%. So you don't really want to use this in combination with medkits, but it is a great perk for altruism because 50% can really add up, especially if you pair it with other perks like we'll make it. This is another perk that has no downsides and no prerequisites. It's just there and it's consistent and it's very, very nice to have consistency with perks. And lastly, she has self-care, which is arguably one of the 10 worst perks in the entire game. It is so, so bad. And it's one of the most used perks in DVD just because there's such a large majority of like beginners in this game. So if you are a beginner, which you probably are if you're watching this video, please don't use this perk. It is not worth it at all. All it does is detriments your own team because you heal yourself at 35% of the normal healing speed. Like if you want to heal yourself, just take a medkit. Just please don't use this perk. It's so bad. The next spot is going to Hinato. His first perk is Blood Rush, which has a ton of prerequisites, but has a very good effect. If you're on Death Hook and you're exhausted, you could press the active ability button to lose a health state and instantly recover from exhausted. And then for the next 20 seconds, you're broken. But if you're able to survive those 20 seconds, you go back to full health. So it's a very strong perk, but it has so many requirements to be able to activate, but it can be very clutch in endgame situations, especially if you're using like sprint burst, because you can sprint burst away from the killer, activate this, sprint burst again, and just hold W. And probably by the time those 20 seconds are up, the killer is just caught up to you. So if you throw like one pallet, you'll be healed. It's, it's honestly pretty decent. His next perk is collective stealth, and this activates when another survivor heals you. And as long as you stay within 12 meters of one another, you don't have any scratch marks until one of you gets hit or until one of you leaves that radius. So it's like kind of decent on a stealthy play style. But if you're on an outdoor map, it's really not going to do much for you. And lastly, we have background player, which got a huge buff a couple of months ago. When another survivor is picked up, you become 200% faster for five seconds and then you become exhausted. So this is super, super good if you're going for flashlight saves or pallet saves because you could stay really far away from the killer so that if they check around, they won't find you and you're still able to get the save because you're so fast, but it's also good just for traversability around the map. Like if you're running to your next objective and somebody gets picked up, you start absolutely zooming to your next objective. So it can save a lot of time. It's a very solid perk now that it has this 200% buff. Next up is going to Rebecca. Rebecca has better than new, which activates when you heal another survivor. And when this perk is active, that survivor can heal, open chests, cleanse, and bless totems 16% faster, but it deactivates if they take damage. This is Rebecca's worst perk because it doesn't affect anything that's very useful except for healing. 16% faster totem cleansing can be useful against a hex build, but those are just very few and far between nowadays. So really the only reason to use this perk is for that additional 16% healing. But I just don't really see why you'd use this perk over like botany knowledge, which gives you 50% healing with no prerequisite. Then she has reassurance, which is a great anti-camping tool. If you're within six meters of a hooked survivor and that goes through floors. So if you're underneath a survivor, you can activate it as well. And for the next 30 seconds, their sacrifice progress is completely frozen. So it's a really, really good good way to counter camping killers because it freezes the entity progression and gives your team more time to group up or to heal or to do whatever they need to 
do to be able to get this save. And her last perk is Hyper Focus, which we mentioned earlier. Every time you hit a great skill check while repairing or healing, you gain one token up to a maximum of six tokens. And for every token, it increases the odds of getting a skill check by 4%. It increases the skill check rotation speed by 4%. And it increases the skill check bonus progression by 30% of its regular value. So normally great skill checks give you 1% additional progression. So if you're able to hit these great skill checks in a row, you're going to be making so much progress on that gen. But it is very hard because the rotation speed gets so fast. However, like I kind of foreshadowed earlier, you could pair this with stakeout. So if you accidentally miss a great skill check, but still hit the good skill check, it still counts and continues the streak. So it allows you to make mistakes and still get the benefits of this perk. So it's one of the stronger gen rush perks. Number 12 is going to Jonah Vasquez. I've been recording for two straight hours and I'm starting to lose my voice. Jonah's first perk is overcome, which is a very, very good exhaustion perk. Whenever you're injured, that movement speed burst that you get gets extended by two additional seconds and then you become exhausted for 40 seconds. This is very, very good to dissuade the killer from chasing you. And it's also really good because holding W is just the strongest thing you can do as survivor. So it forces the killer to spend more time catching up to you if they want to chase you. Plus this perk has so much synergy with other perks. Like I mentioned earlier with the lucky break bite the bullet build. It's a really, really solid perk if you want to escape a chase. That is corrective action, which is going straight in the dumpster. This is horrible. It just makes it so that if there's another survivor working on the same gen as you and they miss a skill check, it doesn't explode the gen. So like it's good if you're teaching somebody how to play the game for the very first time. But other than that, skill checks are not hard at all. So <laughs> this perk will just be so bad. Literally the only time this perk has been useful was in one of my manhunts where Oz was trying to regress my gen so I wasn't able to complete it, but I had this perk on. So it just completely prevented him from regressing the gen. If you want to check out that manhunt episode, by the way, I'll leave a link at the end of this video and remind you about it. It's one of my favorite videos on my channel. And his last perk is Boon Exponential. Again, another very situational perk, but it can be super, super strong if used properly. Any survivor within the Boon's radius can recover twice as fast and can fully recover themselves from the dying state. So if you're going against a killer that slugs a lot, they're going to regret doing this. The problem is that if you're dying near this Boon totem, the killer's probably just going to go over to the totem and destroy it. So a lot of the time, you're only going to get value out of this perk if you die away from the totem and crawl into it. However, boons work through floors, remember? So if you're on like Ironworks of Misery and you boon the top floor and you keep dying in the bottom of main building, you're still going to be able to get the effects of the boon without the killer being able to destroy it easily. Next up is going to David, which unfortunately just completely fell from grace. He used to be such a good survivor to get for his perks. His first perk is We're Gonna Live Forever, which is a good perk. It doubles your healing speed when you're picking up a survivor. And with some prerequisites, you can apply endurance to any survivor that you pick up from the dying state. But obviously that part of the perk is irrelevant now that we have Buckle Up. So it's basically just an anti-slugging perk because it doubles your healing speed for the survivors that are on the ground, which is very, very useful. Then he has Dead Hard, which is just so bad now. Like it's okay. It's good, which is like, this is the reason he's this high on the list, but it's just so bad compared to what it used to be. It's now become kind of a hybrid between an anti-tunnel perk and an exhaustion perk. It activates when you're unhooked and you can Dead Hard a hit to get the endurance. I'm sure all of you know what Dead Hard does. And then it makes you exhausted for 40 seconds. So it's really good to pair with like made for this because you can activate that 3% and Dead Hard doesn't deactivate until you use it. So you can use it in the next chase, even if you're not being tunneled. It is really sad that it only activates twice per match now, but it's still a pretty solid exhaustion perk. And lastly, we have Gnome Either, which is obviously a meme perk. So it's just God awful. It's so bad. The 10th spot is going to Adam, who has two very bad slash mediocre perks, but one extremely strong perk. His first perk is Diversion, which is the Pebble perk. And this perk activates when you're within the tear radius of the killer for 30 seconds without being chased. And if you crouch, you can throw a pebble, which creates a fake loud noise notification and fake scratch marks. So it can trick the killer into going over there. And it's so funny. It is one of the most fun perks to use, especially if you're able to get value out of it. But really the value is kind of minimal and it's just not like it's not a good perk. It's just so fun. His next perk is deliverance, which is such a strong perk. It's very, very good. It activates if you perform a safe hook rescue on another survivor. And then when you're hooked for the first time, you're able to self unhook yourself guaranteed. And this can obliterate killer's pressure, especially now that we have built in borrow time, you can unhook yourself while the other three survivors are still working on separate gens. And if the killer starts to chase you again, you have that built in endurance and haste for those 15 or 10 seconds or whatever it is after being unhooked anyway. So it's a great perk to destroy killer's pressure and is a very common perk in like competitive DBD. And lastly, he has autodidact, which is super, super fun, but it is kind of bad. You start the trial at zero tokens and whenever you get a good skill check, it increases the progression bonus by 15% for each of those good skill checks. But you start off with a minus 25% to healing progression. So the first time you hit a skill check, the progress bar will go down 25%. The next time it'll go down 10%, but then every single time after that, it'll give you a really nice increase. So it'll go five, then 20, then 35, then 50. If you're able to get to the max,
maximum of five tokens on this perk, you can heal someone in like four seconds. It's insane. But the problem with this perk is that skill checks while healing another survivor without a medkit, because this perk doesn't work with a medkit, just kind of is very luck based. So a lot of the times this perk can actually be detrimental to you because you sometimes aren't able to finish a heal because you have that decreased penalty early on in the match. But every few matches you get up to like three or four tokens and healing people is so unbelievably satisfying. All right, moving on to Yui. Yui has lucky break, which I've mentioned a bunch of times before. Whenever you're injured, you don't have any pools of blood or scratch marks, but this has a timer of 60 seconds. And after the 60 seconds are up, it deactivates. However, if you heal yourself within that time, it pauses that timer. So again, it's a great perk paired with overcome. And this is such an unbelievably underrated perk. You can lose a killer so easily with lucky break, even on outdoor maps. It's kind of insane, but I don't think a lot of people realize the full potential of this perk. So it's pretty rare to see, but in the right hands, it can be very strong. Next, she has any means necessary, which allows you to pick up downed pallets. And this is obviously useful to be able to get more uses out of your pallets, but it's useful for a lot of other very niche things as well. Like there's some advanced examples, like being able to block Chucky from scampering under it or doing a CJ attack on a survivor without endangering yourself. And this perk just kind of hard counters a part of doctor because you see the auras of every single down pallet on the map, but you don't see illusionary auras. So you can easily figure out which pallets are fake. And her last perk is breakout, which is kind of bad, but it's very, very useful in some situations. If you're within five meters of a survivor that's being carried by the killer, you become 7% faster and their wiggle speed is increased by 25%. On some maps, this can be completely game changing, but on other maps, it just kind of doesn't really do anything. If you're doing like a Sabo build, it's pretty useful. Or if you're just trying to have fun and take hits, it can be a good perk for that. Number eight is going to Nicholas Cage. His perks are supposed to be jokes, but they're actually really useful. His first one is Dramaturgy, which gives you like a mini sprint burst where you're 25% faster for two seconds. And then you get a completely random effect. You have two bad effects where you either become exposed for 12 seconds or you scream. And then two good effects where your haste gets extended by two additional seconds, or you receive a random item of rare rarity with a random selection of add-ons. And then it makes you exhausted for four seconds. So it's kind of just an activatable mini sprint burst that has a random chance of giving you a bad effect or a good effect. Being able to activate a mini sprint burst whenever you want could be really, really useful and could drastically extend your chase. His next perk is scene partner. This perk activates whenever you're inside of the terror radius. And if you look at the killer, you scream and it reveals their aura for five seconds and it has a cooldown of 60 seconds. So this is just a good perk to know which direction the killer is coming from. So you know where to run, which is especially useful on indoor maps. But overall, it's just not that great of a perk. Usually you'll be able to see where the killer is coming from. So it's just kind of situational. But lastly, plot twist, which allows you to purposely go into the dying state and you're completely silent and have no blood and you could fully recover from the dying state. And if you're able to fully recover from the dying state, you become fully healed and get a 50% haste sprint burst for four seconds. This is a hilarious perk, but it's actually useful. Like I personally think it's very useful because you can get a free health state with this perk or even use this perk to activate other perks or deactivate certain perks. Like for example, corrupt intervention gets deactivated when a survivor goes down. So you can completely eliminate one of the killer's perks by the click of a button. It also counters like save the best for last, for example, because obviously the killer needs to hit you to be able to gain the stack. So if you're about to go down, you just plot twist and then they don't gain another stack. Moving on, number seven is going to Dwight and Dwight just has three very, very just like solid perks. They're not OP. They're just good. The first one is bond, which is the second best aura rating perk in the game besides empathy, in my opinion. And it just shows you the auras of any survivor within 36 meters of you. Simple as that. Very useful for information, can be extended with open handed, and it's just great to have better coordination with your teammates. And then he's proved thyself, which did get nerfed recently, but essentially your gen repair speeds are faster the more people are on the same gen. So it's a great perk for gen rushing, especially if you need to break like a three gen or something and can be very, very useful. And his last perk is leader, which is super underrated. It gives any survivor nearby 25% faster healing, saboing, unhooking, cleansing, chest opening, or gate unlocking speeds. 25% is very useful, especially when stacked with other perks that the survivors might be using. Like if a survivor is using botany and they have leader applied, they'll heal a survivor 75% faster. The sixth spot is going to Kate. Kate has dance with me, which is a really bad perk on its own. But when you pair it with life and quick and quiet, it becomes God tier on certain maps. It makes it so that you lose your scratch marks for the next three seconds whenever you fast vault and it has a cooldown of 40 seconds. So if you pair it with life and quick and quiet, you fast vault silently and you're super fast while having no scratch marks. So you can completely lose the killer and chase. It's one of my favorite perk combinations in the entire game. And then she has windows of opportunity, which is a really solid perk for inexperienced players and experienced players. For newer players, it allows them to learn the map and learn kind of the tiles and where things spawn because it shows you the auras of all breakable walls, pallets, and windows within 32 meters of you. But for experienced players, it helps you to know which tiles spawn on different parts of the map. Like for example, if you're on Midwitch and one of the God windows spawns on the top floor, then you know that on the opposite side of the map, the God window spawns on the bottom floor. Little things like that that take a lot of 
game knowledge are amplified with windows of opportunity. Plus, it's just nice to know which pallets have been used and which haven't. And lastly, she has boil over, which is terrible, but on very specific spots, on very specific maps, like for example, the bottom of preschool, if you spawn the basement at the shack, it is borderline impossible for the killer to hook you. It increases the intensity of your struggle effects on the killer by 80%, so you don't wiggle any faster, but you just wiggle harder. The killer cannot see the auras of any hooks nearby, and if the killer falls from a height, you instantly gain 33% of your current wiggle progression upon landing. So it's really bad in most situations, but in some situations, it is practically uncounterable. All right, we're finally on the top five. The fifth spot is going to Bill. Bill has left behind, which is terrible. Don't use it. It just shows you the aura of the hatch within 32 meters of you if you're the last remaining survivor. Terrible perk. It's just not worth a perk slot. Then he has borrow time, which used to be a necessity on every single build. Like it's still good, but I just don't really think it's worth a perk slot. It just extends that base kit borrow time by 10 seconds. So it's a great anti-tunnel perk, but usually the survivor has enough time to get to a pallet or a window anyway. However, this can absolutely come in clutch in end game situations because if you open the gate near a survivor and you save them and the killer tries to tunnel them to down them again, they can probably make it across the entire map and still have their endurance to get to the exit gate. So it's kind of just a free escape. And lastly, he has Unbreakable, which is arguably one of the best perks in the entire game. Once per trial, you can completely recover from the dying state and your recovery speed is increased by 35%. So this is just the go-to anti-slugging perk. Not only is it good for just picking yourself up if the killer tries to slug you, but it's also just good to be able to recover faster so that your teammates can come pick you up in a slugging situation. If the killer knows how to slug properly, it can win them a game when they have zero hooks. And this perk just makes that so much harder. Number four, I never thought I'd be saying this. This is going to Ash. So Ash has flip-flop like we mentioned earlier, which is very, very good paired with power struggle, but on its own, it's pretty bad. This is the one that converts 50% of your recovery progression to wiggling progression. So if you recover all the way, you have like 45% wiggle progression, which can be actually useful. But the reason you want to get this character is because of buckle up, which is such a strong perk. It's so good right now. And it's really, really fun too. Whenever you're healing a survivor from the dying state, you could see the aura of the killer. And once you finish healing them from the dying state, both you and that survivor get endurance for 10 seconds. Like there's so many perks that give either you or the survivor that you pick up endurance, but this one gives it to you both. So there's no point in running those perks when you have this. Plus you can pair it with four of the people where you can instantly pick survivors up from the ground. So if you're near a survivor right when they go down, you just four of the people buckle up them and you both get out of that situation. It's insane. It's probably one of the best perk combinations right now. And then his last perk is Medal of Man, which is bad. <laughs> you have to get three protection hits, which means you either take a hit while the killer is carrying someone or you take a hit while somebody else is being chased. And then you get permanent endurance until the killer hits you. So it's like a really good effect, but it takes so long to build up that you usually can only activate it once in a match. And it's just not that worth it. Like you could just use like a styptic agent on a med kit to get the same effect. The third spot is going to Fong. I'm so used to calling her Fang, but the correct pronunciation is Fong. So I'm going to be calling her that. Her first perk is technician, which is terrible. Just don't use it. It just makes it so that if you miss a skill check, it doesn't create a loud noise notification for the killer, but it has an additional 3% regression penalty. It's just more detrimental than it is useful. However, her two other perks are so good. Life is the second best exhaustion perk in the game. It gives you three seconds of 150% haste after you rush vault. And then it obviously makes you exhausted for 40 seconds. It's a very, very good perk for just traversability. Or if you want to get out of an unsafe loop to a better loop. So if you're in a TL and you want to get to like a jungle gym, you can do that really easily. Plus it's just nice to get distance on the killer. So they have to spend a lot of time catching up to you. And then she has alert, which is such a good perk and nobody uses it. You see the aura of the killer for five seconds. Every time they break a pallet, breakable wall or generator, you get so much information for this perk, especially if you're playing on solo queue, you can see where somebody's being chased. You can see which pallets have been used and which pallets have been broken. You can see which breakable walls have been broken. So you know to stay away from those loops. You can see which generator has been damaged. So you can figure out some of the perks that the killer has. And you know that the gen is regressing. It is so useful. And I never see this perk. I would really, really recommend trying it out, especially if you're on like dead dog saloon, this map will activate alert every two seconds. It's insane. And the second best survivor based on their teachable perks is going to Zarina. Zarina is just one of the best survivors in this game. Not only does she have some of the best cosmetics for survivor, she has some of the strongest perks in the game as well. Her first perk is off the record, which is like three perks in one and is a really, really good anti-tunneling perk. When you get unhooked for the next 80 seconds, your aura cannot be read by the killer. You have no grunts of pain. So you have built in old iron will and you get endurance for the entire 80 seconds. This perk does deactivate if you do a conspicuous action. So if you do anything that progresses the game, like touching a generator or healing or touching a totem, but if the killer tries to toddle you and they chase you for an entire minute and then finally hit you, you still have endurance and they'll have to chase you again. It is insane. It also deactivates if the exit gates are powered. So just keep that in mind. But this perk is so good. It's literally three perks into one. And I run this in a lot of my build. And then our next perk is red herring, which is really bad. After you repair a gen for three seconds, its 
aura becomes yellow. And then if you hop in a locker, the killer gets a loud noise notification on that gen. So you just kind of fake out the killer and try to lure them to a different gen. But this perk is so situational. Like it doesn't even guarantee that the killer will even go to that gen. Plus if they go to it, it just might not waste that much time. Or if you have a teammate that's working on it and you don't know, you might just bring the killer to that survivor and get them killed. And then she has for the people, which I've always said is one of the better perks in the game because you could pair it with Soul Guard, but now you can pair it with Buckle Up and both get the endurance, which just buffed this perk so hard and it's amazing and I love this perk and it's always been underrated and I'm glad to see it finally being used. It's a very fun perk because it's a very active perk, like you have to really be risky about it, but it's also just so useful for instantly healing a health state of a survivor that might be being tunneled or instantly healing someone off the ground if they're being slugged. Like it's just a really good perk. For those of you who don't know, you have to be healthy to activate this perk and when you activate this perk, it trades your health state for somebody else. So if a survivor's on the ground, you can instantly pick them up, but then you become injured. Or if a survivor is injured, you can instantly heal them to full, but then you become injured and then broken for 60 seconds. So you can't get healed in the next 60 seconds. Fantastic perk. I love this perk. It's so good with buckle up. I'm glad to finally see it being used. And last but not least, the best survivor in the game for teachable perks. And she's always been the best since the literal beginning of this game in 2016 or 2017, whenever it was. This is going to Meg. Meg's first perk is good, but has to be paired with other things to make it actually decent. It's quick and quiet, which makes your vault sounds or entering and exiting lockers sounds completely silent and has a cooldown of 20 seconds. So like I said earlier, it's great with the life dance with me build, or obviously it's good with head on, but honestly on its own, it's not that bad either because it can completely confuse the survivor, especially on indoor maps. However, she has two of probably the best perks in the entire game. Sprint Burst, which is the best exhaustion perk, and Adrenaline. Sprint Burst just gives you 150% movement speed for three seconds when you start to run, but then makes you exhausted for 40 seconds. And obviously you can't use it while you're exhausted. This perk is terrible for anybody with less than 1500 hours. And I am just straight up saying that if you don't have at least 1500 hours, maybe like a thousand hours, I would just not use this perk. This perk to be able to actually use it properly requires so much game knowledge that if you don't have the sufficient game knowledge to use this perk properly, it's going to actually probably help the killer out more. If you're actively walking to get your sprint burst back, that is when you know that you're not using this perk properly. You have to pretend like this perk is not there and manage your exhaustion and 99 your exhaustion so that you can sprint burst while you're in chase, pair it with other perks like vigil and fixated to be able to get sprint burst multiple times in a chase. Like there's so much that you need to do and you need to know when to use it that it makes this perk very, very complex, but it is by far the best exhaustion perk in the game once you get to know how to use it. And her last perk is Adrenaline, which is not only very powerful, but it's extremely fun if you're playing with friends. This perk instantly heals you one health state when the last gen is popped, which can come in clutch so often. And the reason this is so fun with friends is because you can coordinate with your friends to activate this pretty much whenever you want, which is really, really helpful and really good to strategize. So like if there's a camping killer, you just have someone stay out of gen that's 99 and you go one for one with the survivor on the hook. And then when the killer downs you, the survivor pops the gen and you get back up and you get a five second sprint burst too. So you're able to not only heal yourself off the ground, but get away from the killer too. It is such a good perk and is so fun. If this video helped you out, drop a like and check out that DVD Manhunt episode that I was talking about earlier.